Hello students myself Mrs Mamta Yadav and today i will teach you your second chapter of geography that is composition of our planet let's start the chapter the chapter starts with the topic structure of the earth students on the basis of composition properties of rocks and their density the earth is divided into three concentric layers and the layers are the first one is crust second is mantle and third is core first we will study about the first layer of the earth that is crust the crust is also known as the lithosphere it is the solid outermost layer of the earth it is composed of rocks and minerals and its average thickness varies between 8 km to 50 km It has two distinct layers. The first layer is known as continental crust and the second is oceanic crust. Continental crust is also called sial and oceanic crust is also known as sima. The continental crust or sial constitutes the uppermost layer of the earth crust. Its thickness is up to 50 km. It consists of lighter rocks rich in silica and aluminum this layer is not continuous and is mostly found in continental areas above the lower crust the lower crust or sima is continuous layer forming an extremely thin ocean floor it may range from a few meters to 10 kilometers in thickness the main mineral of this layer are silica and magnesium So this is all about the crust. The next layer is mantle. Mantle is also known as the mesosphere. It is used for the it is the second layer of the earth and it lies beneath the crust and extends up to the core of the earth. Mantle's average thickness is about 2900 km. The temperature of the mantle is extremely high because it contains molten magma coming to the surface as lava during volcanic eruptions. The uppermost mantle extends from the crust downward to a depth of 75 km to 100 km. The middle mantle has an approximate depth of 300 km. This is the picture of mantle just beneath below the crust. we have the second layer of the earth that is mantle the third layer of the earth is core the earth's innermost layer is known as core it is also known as bare sphere this layer has a thickness of about 3500 km it is mainly made up of heavy metals particularly nickel and iron this is also known as nifty because of the presence of nickel and iron the boundary which separates the mantle and the core is known as gutenberg discontinuity the temperature of the core ranges between 3000 degree celsius to 6000 degree celsius besides such a high temperature the core is also subject to extremely high pressure The metallic nature of the core lends magnetic properties to the earth. The core has two layers, the solid inner core and the liquid outer core. The outer core comprises semi-solid rocks and the inner core is solid. Though temperature here are the highest, the pressure of the overlying layers keeps the rock in the solid state. So students, this is all about the three layers of earth. Our next topic in the chapter is rocks and minerals. What is rocks? Rocks are natural masses of minerals found on the crust of the earth. The earth crust comprises numerous type of rocks and minerals. Rocks are natural masses of minerals which are found on the crust of the earth. They consist of one or more minerals and include the hard as well as compact rocks such as granite, diamond and loose particles also like clay, mud, sand, etc. 
Rocks may have different colors also, sizes also and textures also. On the other hand, a mineral is an inorganic substance that contains one or more elements having specific physical and chemical properties. The study of minerals is known as mineralogy. Quartz, mica, etc. are some of the common rock forming minerals. Rocks containing a particular metallic mineral in large quantity are called ores. Say for example, bauxite is an ore of aluminium. Similarly, hematite is an ore of iron. Classification of the rocks. Based on the formation, appearance and the type of minerals constituting them, rocks have been categorized into three major groups that are igneous formed when molten rock schools. Second is sedimentary rocks. It is formed by the cementing together of small grains of sediments. And the third one is metamorphic rock. The rocks change by the effects of heat and pressure. Let us study about all these three types of rocks in detail. The first are the igneous rocks. What is igneous rocks? These rocks are formed by cooling and solidification of hot lava and magma. These rocks are still taking new forms due to volcanic activity. They are also referred as the primary rocks. These rocks are still taking new forms due to the volcanic activity. Since they were the first to be formed, they are also referred as the primary rocks. Students, the lithosphere originally comprised primary or the igneous rocks. Due to certain internal and external processes, these rocks underwent changes and many of these were transformed into what are called sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. On the basis of origin, igneous rocks may be classified under two categories. The first is extrusive or the volcanic rocks and the second is intrusive or the plutonic rocks. Now what is extrusive or volcanic rocks? Lava in the molten material which reaches the earth's surface through volcanic vents, it forms extrusive or volcanic rocks by cooling and solidifying. When the lava gets exposed to the air, it cools rapidly and fine grain crystalline rocks come into existence. This is only known as the extrusive or the volcanic rocks. Say for example, basalt, pumic, etc. Now what is intrusive or plutonic rock? The molten material or the magma may cool and solidify below the earth's surface to form intrusive or plutonic rocks. As the, as the molten material within the earth cools slowly, large crystals or coarse grain crystalline rocks are formed. This is only known as the plutonic or the intrusive rock. Say for example, granite, dolerite, etc. Igneous rocks are generally crystalline in structure as well as hard and compact also. So I hope you have understood what are igneous rocks. The next type of the rock is sedimentary rocks. What are sedimentary rocks? Rocks that has formed through the deposition and solidification of sediments, especially sediments transported by water and wind are known as sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are often deposited in the layers and frequently contain fossil. Rock fragments are carried by running water, wind and moving ice and are deposited in depressions under water. Over a period of time, these deposited materials of the sediments are continuously accumulated in layers, get compressed and hardened with the aid of cementing materials such as lime to form sedimentary rocks. Based on the formation, sedimentary rocks are also classified under three categories. The first is stratified rocks, second is chemically deposited sedimentary rock and third is organically formed sedimentary rocks. What is stratified rocks? 
The largest of the sediment particles such as the sand and the pebbles get deposited initially while the finer sediments such as the clay and the silt get deposited later. Sedimentary rocks that presents a layer or the stratified structure and are also known as the stratified rock. Sedimentary rocks formed in this way are mechanically formed sedimentary rocks for example sandstone, shale, mudstone etc. Next is chemically deposited sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rocks are also formed from the deposition of chemicals including salts through evaporation. Rock salt is an example of such type of chemically deposited sedimentary rocks. Third is organically formed sedimentary rock. In many cases, the skeletal remains of sea organism and decayed plants are trapped in the sediments and deposited on the sea floor. Over the year, this remain becomes organically formed sedimentary rocks. Example of such type of rocks are limestone and coal. Students, sedimentary rocks are soft compared to the igneous rocks and in their structure is a non-crystalline. I hope it is clear and the thick and the next uh, type of rock is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks. When existing igneous and sedimentary rocks change their chemical and physical form due to intense heat and pressure, they are called metamorphic rocks. These processes may take millions of years. Due to the effect of heat and pressure, they are often banded or layered. This group also belongs to the secondary one as they are formed from the existing igneous and sedimentary rocks. So for example, granite changes to gneiss, sandstone changes to quartzite and limestone changes to marble are the example of metamorphic rocks. Generally, metamorphic rocks have a crystalline structure and they are perhaps the hardest of all the rocks. So students, this is all about the different types of rocks. Our next topic is rock cycle. What is rock cycle? The rock cycle is the process by which rocks of one kind change into rocks of another kind. Rock cycle signifies the cyclical transformation of one kind of rock into another. Due to heating, melting, erosion, deposition and chemical action, one group of the rocks leads to the formation of another groups. The formation and development of this type of rocks is a cyclical process and it is known only as rock cycle. Igneous rocks are formed first after being broken down by natural processes such as weathering and erosion. As a result, deposited and compacted sediments from sedimentary rocks. After being subjected to great heat and pressure, igneous and sedimentary rocks are transformed into metamorphic rocks. Sedimentary rocks may be buried again and melted due to heat from the interior of the earth forming magma. Metamorphic rock may be broken down into sediments due to natural processes later forming sedimentary rock and even buried again to form magma. Thus, a cyclical relationship exists between three rock groups and this entire process is only known as the rock cycle. The entire process is powered by the energy of sun and involves processes both on the surface of the earth as well as in its interior. So students, this is all about the rock cycle. Our last topic of the chapter is uses of rocks and minerals. Rocks comprises different minerals which are of immense value to human. Rocks are used as building materials. Say for example, granite, sandstone and marble. Minerals like natural gas, coal and petroleum or the fossil fuels are the source of power. 
Besides that, rocks have also made agriculture possible as soil is formed by the decomposition or degradation of rocks. Chemical founds in the rocks are sometimes used as fertilizers also. Moreover, rocks contain fossils which tell us about life in the past. If you see the chart given over there, we will come to know which particular rock is used for what purpose. Say for example, basalt is used in road building materials, granite is used for building monuments and tombstone. Similarly, marble is used in the building floors, tiles in bathrooms. Plumic is used in the sourcing, scrubbing and polishing materials. Sandstone is used in the building industry for houses. So these are the various uses of rocks and minerals. I hope you all have understood the chapter. With this, we have come to an end of the chapter. Thank you.